psychedelic drugs, you probably have some preconceived notions about what they're all about, but the company in Kelowna, Entheomed, is planning on changing your ideas about it and applying psychedelics to help people with mental health issues and chronic pain. Yes, we are an integrative healthcare clinic focused on the treatment of chronic pain and mental health conditions. We have our psychedelic assisted therapy model Odyssey at the core of our business. So that's really the innovative way that we're helping treat lots of these mental health conditions. So I think a lot of people have preconceived notions about psychedelic drugs. Um, and they might not like the idea of a loved one seeking this kind of treatment because of those preconceived notions, am I right? Absolutely, there's a lot of stigma that surrounds these sorts of medications and this sort of therapy because of what happened in the 60s. A lot of the time in the 60s, there was this kind of willy-nilly attitude towards psychedelics. You know, these are great for everyone. They're the future of consciousness and mental health. And people were taking them without the correct education or support or safety surrounding those treatments. So what we really try and do here is create that safe environment or called set and setting. So we create that safe environment and we make sure every patient does a physical and a psychiatric screening to make sure that they're suitable and safe for treatment. Every patient receives education and also pre-treatment therapy to help them prepare for that experience that they're undergoing. They'll do their treatment in clinic with medical supervision. So we have a doctor and a nurse present and also a psychiatrist in the building. And then within 48 hours after their treatment, they'll see that counselor again to really help them integrate and understand the experience they went through. So it's not about saying, hey, I want to have a psychedelic experience. It's about using it to improve outcomes for patients. Absolutely, so I think the, the way to kind of look at it would be there's recreational use and therapeutic use. So we're definitely on the therapeutic side. <clears throat> so lots of our patients will be, you know, depression, anxiety, PTSD, OCD, postpartum. There's a wide spectrum of conditions that people would seek our sort of treatment for. So is this a treatment of last resort for people with extreme uh, mental health issues or psychotic problems or is it the kind of thing that the kind of treatment you could seek to just improve your mental health? Both. Um, so the interesting part with the way that legalities is set up in Canada right now, um, intramuscular ketamine is the treatment we're specializing in right now because it's legal for off-label use. So you would just need a referral from a psychiatrist, a GP or a family doc to seek treatment at our facility. Whereas if you're looking for something like psilocybin, the only way to access that is under the special access program. So that's a one-off application to Health Canada every time. And for that application, it has to be on the more severe end of the spectrum. So we're talking end of life distress, severe PTSD or severe treatment resistant depression, where you failed a number of other interventions. So ketamine right now is the, you know, the easier way to access psychedelic therapy with that referral from a doctor. Uh, whereas psilocybin with the current legalities is still more for severe conditions. When you do a ketamine treatment, how is it that it works? Beautiful question. So a lot of the times if we're struggling, you know, with anxiety or depression in our life, our ego or our personality has these kind of overdeveloped, overdetermined, self-defeating thought patterns. It's like we're, we're stuck in a loop. So it actually turns out dissolving these patterns seems to be the means to transcend them. So one of the best analogies is you know, imagine the brain of a chronic depressed or anxiety patient. They have these very defined ruts and grooves that the neurons or their thinking pattern takes in their brain. We're in the Okanagan, so we all understand skiing and snowboarding. So imagine that that's just like a ski slope where it hasn't snowed in four weeks. There's these really defined ruts and grooves. That ketamine experience is almost like a fresh dump of snow that really allows that person to create new neural pathways and reframe and rethink about their life in different ways. But this is a kind of a, a moving uh, situation legally. And it sounds like speaking with you, you'd like to see that psilocybin or the magic mushroom psychedelic made available to more patients. But I guess that's something you work on over time. Absolutely. Yeah, we're constantly lobbying for that as well. And, um, you know, psilocybin and MDMA, I believe, will be the, the kind of two other therapeutic molecules that will be coming through. Really, the way we look at our Odyssey therapy model is it will be molecule agnostic. So over time, it will be as a patient comes in, they'll be able to say, you know, I would like to experience a ketamine experience or a psilocybin experience or an MDMA experience. And lots of these molecules have, you know, more therapeutic potential for certain indications. MDMA is showing strong, you know, therapeutic potential for the treatment of PTSD. Um, so I just think over time it will start to evolve. So I believe it'll be ketamine for now. And then over the next kind of two to five years, you really see these other molecules start to be regulated in a therapeutic setting.
So what sort of acceptance are you getting as people kind of look, oh, what are they doing over there? Mm -hmm. You had the Chamber of Commerce give you an award. Did that come as a surprise? Hey, absolutely. It was a, a wonderful honor. And, you know, I was surprised myself that, you know, the Chamber usually a little, you know, more traditional. So it was really cool to see them accept a business like ours and just kind of understand and recognize the impact we're having in the community. And, um, you know, I think over time, with data that's starting to come out on these treatments, it'll be the data that will win out in the long run. And, um, you know, we collect data from every patient that comes through our doors and we're showing really great improvements in depression scores, anxiety scores. So I just think as more and more of this data comes out, as our patient load grows, as other companies' patient load grows, and we start to share this data pool, that's what's going to help bring this into the mainstream and reduce a lot of the stigma. Because when it's done in a safe and controlled environment, that's where we're having these kind of big improvements in people's lives and their conditions. Right. So how would it work? If, if someone came to you um, wanting to get this kind of treatment, how does it look uh, by the time they end up having their, say, ketamine treatment? What's going on? Beautiful. So yeah, kind of a bit of the arc of the patient journey, I guess. Um, you know, they would come in and do their physical and their psychiatric screening. If they pass that, they have their pre-treatment counseling. They also get access to our app called Odyssey Online. So one of the real things we try and do here is we don't want them to be reliant on the psychedelic experience. We try and teach them other tools and modalities like breath work, meditation, yoga, some somatic techniques, and um, so that they can really start to have a better relationship with their body and understanding of their emotions and their feelings. Um, so the psychedelic experience is only one part of the treatment. After they do their psychedelic experience in the clinic here, they have their counseling within 40 hours afterwards to really help them understand and integrate that experience. And they have lifetime access to our app and it's ongoing. And then in our beautiful yoga studio here, we offer Odyssey Mind and Body classes. So it's just ongoing kind of tune up for them to be able to experience and actually build a community as well with other people that are going through similar things as themselves. And at the time when they're being administered the ketamine Who's, who's with the patient? Uh, we have a airway trained physician, an ACLS trained nurse, and there's a psychiatrist in the building as well. As of now, this kind of treatment, you can't get it on your Medicare. No, you cannot. Um, so the interesting thing is we just got a preferred provider status from Medivy Blue Cross and Veterans Affairs. Um, so it's slowly starting to shift. So unfortunately, we are fully private pay right now. Um, we have had some cases where insurance providers have covered the therapy portion of the treatment, uh, but that's an ongoing battle for us really to try and gather more data and submit these treatment plans to these insurance and benefit providers so that we can have you know, the access open up to the wider population. One other thing that's going on is at the same time that you're building the kind of business that can be endorsed by the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. you, you, you see um, magic mushrooms being issued from places in Vancouver that then get into difficulties with regulatory agencies, calling themselves dispensaries when maybe they're not. So that's all happening in parallel. <laughs> and you have to sort of sort yeah. yourself out from that? Absolutely. Um, you know, the way we think about it is you know, cannabis or what's happening with, um, you know, the kind of gray market psychedelics is there's a recreational dispensary model and there's a clinical medical prescription model. And um, so the, the one issue we see with some of those gray market stores is the standardization of the product. And, um, you know, here at Entheomed, we use, you know, pharmaceutical grade standardized products. And um, so we know exactly what that patient is getting. And um, someone who's just going to one of these stores and um, as they're testing done on these products, who knows what they're getting. And the big thing we see is the education for the patient. You know, if someone is having a psychedelic experience and they aren't properly educated on what may happen or what may occur during that experience, it can be very unsettling for the person, especially if they aren't in a safe set and setting. So what we really try and do here is ensure that we're controlling that environment so that it is safe for that person so that they can relax into the experience, have that intention and vision go inward. And that's really where the therapeutic benefit is coming from it. Interesting stuff. We'll see where it goes. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching Kelowna Now.